Mike back from MJ Signcraft. If you remember, uh, Mike did the Shermanator, did an awesome job. We got him back to work on the C10. Now, um, this is my truck, but I don't really need a tow truck. And Andrew Rose from Tuesley Auto Records has been a major sponsor for the channel for since we were 5,000 subs. He saw us and he, he said, you know, whatever you guys are doing, I want to be a part of it. You guys look like you're having fun. Whatever you need in the yard, let me know. So since I can only drive one vehicle at a time anyway, um, we're actually gonna kind of give this truck to him. Uh, we'll use it whenever we need to or we want to and he can drive it around for advertising for his business. So we're gonna put Tuesday Auto Records on the, on the door. Now, a little backstory. His father was originally going to be the one that uh, was gonna do the signage, but unfortunately he passed away um, just before he was able to do it. So Andrew doesn't know that we're doing this and we're gonna bring this to uh, Motorama and then we're gonna show him the truck and uh, give it to him there. So pretty excited about that. Um, but yeah, let's uh, get into it. Here we go. cab off again. We gotta figure out the way to get the cylinder actually working. I gotta somehow find 100 hours just for welding and then a couple hundred hours after that yeah, for wiring and plumbing and all that fun stuff. For the pinstriping we're gonna be using a pinstripe brush. We're gonna put some paint on here to try and match the patina paint in the rocker panel. Andrew gave us a pile of parts for this truck and pretty exciting to be able to do this for a really, really good friend. So, so yeah, what we're gonna do uh, with the pattern, we're gonna use this is called Sarral, S-A-R-A-L paper to transfer the image here. And uh, just because the chalk dust isn't showing up so good on the uh, multicolor paint here. So we transfer that through this paper and it transfers onto the paint there and gives us a nice crisp edge to follow. Okay, for the beam here, we can see the oil that is dripped over it. That's gonna be a problem for getting the lettering to stay on. So what we gotta do is degrease it. So we're using just a uh, degreaser that most automotive body shops use. Not only will it cause the uh, paint to fish eye, but it'll uh, keep it from adhering. Okay, once again on uh, this one here, we have our, our pattern perforated and the surface is dark enough so the, the white chalk should work. Transfer it, yeah, it looks like it's gonna work out pretty good. This is called a pounce pad, P-O-U-N-C-E, and that's white chalk dust. Some people will use talcum powder, but talcum powder may cause fish eyeing in the paint, although it's kind of a moot point on this project, but uh, uh, it, it also causes cancer, and there's a class action lawsuit. If oh, yeah, any yeah. of you have ovarian cancer, you, yeah. there's a class action lawsuit against yeah, we, uh, we, talcum we, powder. It's a pretty big deal, yeah. <laughs>
Okay, so for the pinstriping, we're going to be using a pinstripe brush. There's a number of companies you can get them through. Uh, this one is a King 13, which is a Todd Hansen signature brush, which are excellent brushes. Uh, there's a sword and a dagger. There's two different styles. Um, this is considered a, a sword. It's got the long hairs on there. They're natural animal hairs, so they hold lots of paint and they give you a nice long line. You'll notice there's a flat side and a round side. And my preference is to actually have the flat side against my finger when I'm pulling it. And typically, most people will hold it between their thumb and their finger like that. Although sometimes to get tighter curves, it's more advantageous to hold it at the end and, and work it. And you kind of rotate as you drag around, you'll see as we're striping there. But for longer lines, you can use your fingers as a stabilizing force and then bring your line down. And that just helps you keep your pressure and the even line thickness on there. Basically, as we go along, you'll see here, we, we palette the, uh, the brush to load it with paint. So I'm using some scrap cards, you can use just about anything. Consistency of the paint will be a determining factor to how well it works. You don't want it too thick, too wet, it'll run too quick. But the idea is to get the, the hairs nice and loaded up like that so that you've got lots of paint and then you can pull it for quite a distance. I'll just show here on a piece of paper. So again, you're using your fingers to stabilize and hold the brush to get a uniform pressure on there. And then you're just dragging back but you can see how much you get a lot of paint you can go for quite a distance on there and then if you need to do a tighter curve holding it on the end like that you can kind of take that and drag it around like a wet noodle and get tighter curves as you're painting Put uh, pinstripe backs around the door handles. Uh, it was pretty common practice to put stripes in different locations on a vehicle years ago. You still see some guys do it, but uh, um, so we're, we're going to follow through with kind of that tradition there. Uh, for this, we're going to use a, a Stabilo pencil. It's a non-grease pencil. It's water soluble, just to give us an um, indication of where we're going to put the line. So I'm just going to use my fingers to hold the spacing and then just run a, a line across here as a guide.
We're gonna put some paint on here to try and match the patina paint in the rocker panel as the rest of the truck looks. Now this has a, an e-coat from the manufacturer, an epoxy coating. Paint will probably stick okay. I'm using a lettering paint, but just to be sure, we're gonna give it a little scuff here just to get some mechanical adhesion. We're just gonna get a, a wipe to get the dust off, use a degreaser in case there's any contaminants. Uh, so make sure the paint sticks good. Normally, if you're painting, you'd use a tack cloth. We're not too worried about that. We're doing a finish that's gonna be rough anyway. So from here, we can put our paint on. The next is we got to mix the paint and try and match the color there. Okay, we're going to start out with uh, some one shot. Uh, in this case, we've got Robin Egg Blue, 151L, and this is a blue green, a teal. And between these two colors, we should be able to get pretty close. So I'm going to start out with some of the, uh, the lighter. Then I'm going to add a little bit of the darker color and sneak up on it. We don't want to get too carried away because we get dark really quick. We'll stir that and we need to go a little darker all right we got a little ways to go yet okay we're going to take it over and do a comparison at this point i think we're still a little light and we'll actually dab a little on there and you can see we're quite a bit light so we're going to darken that up a little more I think we started out with too much of the light blue, so what I'm going to do is pour off some of that, about half of that. We'll add some dark to that and bring that a little darker. Okay, so we're a fair bit darker. I, I think we're still light, but we're going to go and just take a look comparatively here again. Okay, we're getting close. You see as we blend it out there, we're not too bad. The uh, original color here is not as bright as that. It's a little bit more muted. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this and add a little bit of white and black, or, or maybe even some gray, just to save the two steps, um, to try and kill the intensity of the color a little bit. I think we're probably gonna need a little bit of black as well. Now the black is very powerful, so you gotta be really careful with the black. You can really quickly get out of control with it. Now the gray or the white will kind of take the edge off of the pigment. It'll uh, uh, kind of kill it a little bit. And then the black will just bring us more to a little bit of a gray shade. I think we need a little more black in here. Okay, we're getting closer. Uh, I see a little bit more blue in there and the color is still a little bright. So I think we're gonna add a combination of blue and black to that yet. And that should get us pretty close. And add a little bit more blue to that. Okay, and then we'll go and check it again. As close as I think we're gonna get with these paints, but we'll mess around with it to blend it in and then we'll add the patina, the rust, and it should work out quite well. Now, this paint is uh, an enamel. It's gonna dry with a bit of a glossy finish. So what we're gonna do is add some stuff to it to kill the gloss a bit. Now, some people will use talcum powder. Actually, I had an opportunity to uh, speak with a, a gentleman who painted the nose art on the bombers in World War II and he was telling me what they did with their enamel was they would actually uh, add a little bit of urine to it and that would kill the gloss which was kind of interesting. They couldn't have gloss paint on there because the sun would reflect and the enemy could see them right yeah, yeah. and so it had to be a flat finish. So it was kind of an interesting piece of history but we're going to use uh, this is called whiting powder. Uh, we use it for those pounce pads that we have and it's similar to like a, a talc kind of thing, but it has no uh, silicone or anything that's gonna cause a problem. So we're gonna add just a little bit of this into our paint mixture and mix that in and that'll act as a flattening agent. And then we're gonna add a little bit of a thinner to thin that out a little bit so it uh, flows a little better. And when that dries, it should kill the gloss somewhat. It'll still have a bit of a shine, but a lot of the parts of the cab does as well. So I think we'll be okay. If worse comes to worse, we can uh, take some scotch Brite and just go over that and just take the edge off of that if need be. Okay, so really simple. We're going to take the paint and your dollar store paintbrush and we're going to put a coat on there. This has got really good coverage. This is the, the one-shot paint, so we won't need to uh, worry about uh, how well it's going to cover. You'll see it covers really quite well.
we're going to kind of blend the paint in. We're going to use a piece of sponge here with some paint on it. And that'll help us just to kind of blend it in a little bit. Give us a finish that's uh, not abrupt. So what we're going to do, we're going to use a sponge initially to come with some rust colored paint and add some texture and then we'll come with the airbrush and, and finish it off there. The edge here usually uh, where the feet would scuff the paint off, that'll probably be a little bit more rusty there. So we'll emphasize that a little bit. Thank you very much. That yeah. looks incredible. Good. Good. It's uh, really happy with that. So yeah. I think that's the last time I buy a cab locally. <laughs> <laughs> Half a cab. <laughs> really from here down, but you made it look really, really good. MJ Signcraft, what, where can we find you? Uh, MJSigncraft.com. That's probably the easiest bet. Okay. All my information's there. So. Yeah, for this painting, but you do a lot of printables and stuff too. We have uh, full sign shop pretty much. Yeah, so, okay. yeah. Quite a variety of things. So, yep. Right on. All right, next time you see this, it'll probably be at Motorama. There's still stuff that I'm doing to the engine behind the scenes, so we gotta get to work. <laughs> Thanks, man. Thank <laughs> okay, so I have my clips. Uh, got those off Amazon, so now we got our plug. So now I'm gonna run the wires um, through the deck. So we're gonna put them right in the front here, and that is the farthest that the box will be away. So um, that, that will allow me to spin it all the way if I wanna touch the cab. I spin it the other way and just unplug it. Um, worst case scenario, yank on it and um, you don't unplug it, it'll unplug itself. So uh, we're gonna run the wires and that's good because I need to get this working because uh, there's a pile of snow outside and my forklift, uh, I got my forklift stuck and now it's frozen in the ground. So I gotta get this thing working so I can lift my cab up and put it on the truck. Here we go. Okay, that's it wired. So the plug goes through here, through the through the bed right there, and then gets bolted along the frame and then ends up at the battery. We'll put a disconnect at the battery there, so we'll put an on-off switch. I did give myself a little bit of cord sticking out of the bed, and you might be wondering why I didn't bolt it just to the side and have it hidden in there, because when I take the crane out, this is gonna be hanging there. That's mainly because once you have the crane up and you're downhill and you're freewheeling, there's nothing really to, there's no hydraulic assist on this at all, so it's just gonna wanna swing downhill. And if that happens and I run out of cord, um, and this is bolted down, it's gonna hang off of the wire. So it's either gonna wreck the pump, like yank every, all the guts out there, or it's gonna wreck the plug. So this way, if it just, if it pulls, first thing it's gonna do is disconnect the power, and that's more or less a safety thing. So this, no matter which way it's flopping, it's gonna pull. So it's inside a rubber hose. Uh, everything is loomed and protected and shrink wrapped. So I think we're good. Um, this section, I also put uh, like a hydraulic hose protective sleeve on there. So we should be safe. Um, it takes a long time to make the nice hoses, but it's well worth it. And nice having these little kits from Princess Auto, uh, which led to like use the grommets to protect it and, and self tap the rubber tech clamps and everything into place makes it really easy so along with all the hydraulics and the electrical stuff that they got they got 
so much more. Anyway, I'm gonna grab lunch and then I'll hook up the controller. Still gotta hook up my positive and my negative for the controller and the solenoid. And then put some oil in there and push some buttons. I'm gonna grab a battery, I'm gonna grab the battery from the tank. Hopefully that's still good. And then uh, wire everything up properly at the back. And we're all set, here we go. Okay, so made new cables, all new ends, all nicely covered and loomed. Um, I picked up my shut-offs and I will hide them somewhere where you guys don't see them. Just in case any of you guys are thinking of um, getting any ideas. Uh, so one will shut off the crane and the other one will shut off the truck. Just because the batteries are at the back here. And that's a long way of positive cable to be going to the front. So when we're not using it, we'll shut it off. In an emergency, we can run back and shut it off. Uh, also wired up my controller, which is very easy, just follow the instructions. And now, put some oil in it, and it should work. So, I'm using the, I got this from Lyle's. He had a whole crate full of the Spyrex shell uh, ATF. So ATF is like hydraulic oil. So we'll throw that in. Make sure to spill a little bit, just to protect the bottom of the toolbox. And then push a the button and see what happens. Uh, I'll try and lift it, we'll crack this loose, that'll let all the air kind of escape through here. And then we'll push the down button and it should go down the other way. So, here we go. Oh. Hook something up back, Chris. So we go. Well, that's disappointing. Oh, I should probably take that. Or my batteries are completely shot. Upside down, I'm pushed out. It's making noise. I think it's fine. Isn't that just the coolest thing? Okay, so it was only going up, and that's because I had the one wire to positive instead of negative. Should have put it on negative. Should have read a little closer, got a little excited. So I just had a, a my afternoon tea, and after coffee, everything always works better. So I will unhook that wire, put it in the right spot, and then she'll go down. And we're all set. There's only a half hour wasted. Actually, less than that. I, I went inside, had a coffee. So, and then... <laughs> came to me, something's wrong. I'm trying to wire, figure out how it's working. We got it, here we go. That's Okay, so of course about two or three days after Mike lettered the truck, Andy decides to poke his head in the shop. And because I wasn't sure where these videos were gonna go in what order, I had the lettering pointed towards the wall so that they wouldn't make it on camera. Um, but thankfully, I was able to convince Andy that I, the C10 was too far gone with the cab not being on it and that, that I was only taking the F350 and the Bronco um, to Motorama. And I purposely sat uh, in between him and the Bronco so that he would be looking at the Bronco with his back to the C10 so we wouldn't get any ideas. And I think at this point, I still had him fooled. All right, so I got the intake on. 
um, unfortunately, I got the wrong gaskets for this thing, so I have to pull it back off again. And I hate that about pushing for a show because otherwise I would have went on to other things, but it will run like that. So we're gonna leave it and move on. So everything else, I've wired everything else properly. Everything else is kind of tucked away. So we just got to put the cab back on it again. And so I reached out and said, hey, Zach, what are you doing? <laughs> Actually, you reached out. I reached out to you. I was like, hey, I got some free time. Why don't I come over, give you a hand, try to get ready for Motorama. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, I'll do the best I can. I won't get crushed by this huge cab that we're this gonna is, try to put on. This here. is uh, CSA approved. It's the right height, so I don't bash my head on yep. it. We're all set. Yep. It's it's tested. That frame mark there is like brand new. So, it's, yeah. yeah, it should hold it. The rope is, yeah, the rope is, <laughs> is in mint shape. Patina. That's, that's exactly <laughs> what we're going for, so. So, yeah, we'll put the cab on it and then uh, we'll see what happens. It'll be fine. You can reach. We'll go get a germs. Yeah, don't, don't tip the cab on it. I'm laying on my intake. And... <laughs> I'm not six foot something. Okay. So, and I'm not even a short guy. The top of this cab is really dirty. <laughs> I can get a lot more head out of it if, if we extend the crane, right? But I, I yeah. was worried that I wouldn't be able to get it close enough, but I don't think that's gonna be an issue. And I'll leave my leg here so that when he pushes it, then I, I get pinned in place. <laughs> I never wanna leave here, okay? <laughs> As I go down, I'm gonna go up ahead. Like here? Tilt the, tilt the back. Here. How about we put axle stands under the front? Sure. Yeah, and I'll, then, I'll and then uh, tighten that front cable so the cab is leaning back. Otherwise, uh, yeah. What we should have done is just put jacks on the front. And then... Yeah, could have had a better plan, right? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, I'm pretty well lined up on uh, Oh, yeah? Yeah, like if you look underneath, we're in the... I trust you. Where you got your cab now? I don't want to walk all the way to your side. Okay, well, we'll put the back down. That'll help. Right there. Okay, that's that. Uh, I got lots on this side. Yeah. That's a thing of beauty. That's not, that went pretty slick. I I am very happy with that. So nice, yeah. Um, start some bolts. They're all the same. We'll do the front one first. The nut in that mount should be able to move around. Yeah, I got the problem in. How oh, it started? Yeah. Once you give it a couple of ugga duggas, it's not going anywhere. No. Got her? Nice. Goes so much better with two people. Does it? Thanks a lot, man. Yeah, no worries, dude. That's very nice and low. <laughs> yep, I'm gonna have to do that. Try to wire the inside, wire the air controller, get it to fire up. Awesome, all right. Zach, thanks a lot, man. Hey, no problem, Rich. Now, time. He didn't just drive over two hours to come put the cab on in a half hour, so we're gonna get going <laughs> on the Bronco. But you got a channel? I got a channel. You can follow me at Tukes and Tires. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. So you're gonna follow me along there, working on a bunch of cool stuff. So uh, in you know, the most Canadian way possible, Tukes and Tires. It's gotta be super Canadian. <laughs> awesome. Thanks for your help, man. Hey, no problem. Okay, I didn't learn my lesson, but uh, these are these are the bed sides or the rails on the side of the bed. Now, these are these were on the Dodge bed, but they're pretty unique because they they follow the contour of the ribs in the bed. But um, this was a this was a really rare Dodge bed. It was like ten feet long, and we needed nine feet, so I cut. 
I cut the end off on both ends where these support rails were and I've got the right patina and everything to fit inside the to match the whole truck and then I cut a bunch off the front which was also where the where the truck was rotten a little bit um, so it worked out really good but we have to cut that bed side out because I don't want two layers we could maybe do it but I kind of want this inside layer off so that we can weld these to the new shortened bed, which was the right bed length for our tow rig setup. So unfortunately, some of that shitty dodge work is coming back to bite Vince in the ass because I'm gonna get him to grind all this stuff and do it while I work on other stuff. It would, only four of them, it's not too bad. Take those bolts out and try to save that even though there's a hole in there, I don't care, we'll, we'll weld that on and it'll be fine. <laughs> but, uh, sorry, man. <laughs> <laughs> Vince is welding the box sides on. So we just, basically we just eyed it up. So you'll start with the cab. Um, we are gonna have to move this exhaust forward, which is not that big of a deal, but we're not gonna do it right now. Basically, we just gotta move the coupler on the turbo back a bit. That'll pull everything forward and that'll clear this then. Um, the cab is sitting level and then um, the box we put on a nice height. Uh, keep in mind, I'm going to build steps going down on the bottom so it looks like it's lower. So we'll drop it down. This is a suspension all the way down. But I'm really happy with that, where that sits. So we're gonna tack this side, spot weld it to the angle iron that I put up. This is still the brace for my step afterwards and weld all these sidebars to whatever steel we got um, on the back here. And then we've got the bars, the original box. We'll put that over top of our spot welds here. And then there's already holes in there, so we're gonna see those. But yeah, then those will roll nicely on the front. And that'll give it a little bit more texture front and back. It actually makes it look really good. Okay, so this is more green and the back of the cab is blue. we have got to cover that up. Got to put a front on here quick. So this is the old piece that's been laying in my shop forever. I had to cut the rusty parts off and I got to knock it down a little bit. Um, but I also need to make it wider. So Vince kept these from behind the stake pockets and uh, managed to save those. So now we can weld those kind of here, keep the same color. The uh, ribs are different, but it's, it's fine, it's no big deal. We'll weld that on there and then we'll weld it in place. And then put that in and the back is done. Um, sorry for the lack of filming. I gotta leave in like two hours. <laughs> okay, so at this point we're just scrambling. The best I could do is put a GoPro in the area and uh, kind of watch us get this truck put together SEMA ready. So basically I gotta tow it to Motorama without any panels falling off. The body line's somewhat in order, but I knew I was not gonna get it driving under its own power. There was a couple things I did not wanna rush, like fabricating the brake pedal to uh, because the booster is way off to the side and a whole bunch of little stuff that I hate pressuring myself to to cobble together so Vince and I slammed the truck together um, just enough to make it presentable and then we loaded it up and headed to Motorama all right so we're at Motorama we talked about this way back when we started this Andrew gave us a pile of parts for this truck and then we, and then I talked to him and I said um, we should figure out who owns what in the truck and he goes ah he goes, you did so much more of the truck, I don't need anything. So because of that, we're giving him the truck. Um, just to drive around, use for his business. Um, his dad was going to do the lettering on the side of the truck right before COVID hit. Um, he wanted to wait until it figured out what COVID was. He ended up passing away before he was able to do it. So we had Mike letter it, but also dedicate the truck to him. So he's coming in, um, talking to his wife. He did come in the driveway, unfortunately. So I think he knows something's up. But uh, um, it's uh, going to be pretty, pretty exciting to be able to do this for a really, really good friend. So here we go. I don't know, he didn't get a chance. 
against the Simon. Yeah. Yeah. There you go, man. Track. It's not done yet. It doesn't move. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, so the only thing that we could read off of your grandfather's track was it did say towing right here. You could just barely see it. And it had the number 10 on it, so we took that. And then we got him to design just the Tuesday Auto Parts. And then, yeah, because of, because of SIG, we put his name on it. And then he did all these little extra little little tweaks on it to try and keep it retro. Yeah. But yeah, long time coming. Lots to do yet, but so you want to do power tour yet? <laughs> Fun? <laughs> wow. So I was trying to keep it a a, a surprise. It's too you did bad. a great job. <laughs> yeah? Good. Yeah man. Good. Uh. Good. I should have told you too. Just come back. It's like, but then I was going past, and then I saw everything else there, and I'm like, well, maybe they need a hand. They're just loading things up. Like, I'm like, I see Aaron's filming. Yeah. So like, I'm like, maybe they need an extra set of hands. So I like turned around, came back. I, I noticed Aaron's like, I'm like, uh, hey, what's up, man? What are you, you guys loading up? And I, I think he was kind of like shell shocked. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I should have had a complete blowout on Aaron, just like. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? I told you we need this. We have to go. And then like make you so like yeah. uncomfortable. I, I was like, go, I just yes, gotta go. Yeah. yeah. Like, <laughs> but then, Anything else I wasn't gonna buy. But then I was working on the C10 when you came into the shop. Like I was 100% oh, like working on this. Yeah. And then I'm like, hey, just stopping in. I was like, take a chance. I'm like, ah. Oh. But I'm like, I'm not working by the C10. I'm like, I'll just tell him working on the Bronco. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the seat does bolt right down. I'd get you to sit in it, but the air manifold for the air suspension's there, yeah. and it's just up too high, it's sitting in the seat, so I had to throw some 2x4s under the seat, but all little things that, uh... Last time we got a, Yeah, last time we But very excited for this uh, one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, 